Hi guys and welcome back to Mo's Munchie Box. So we've got a bit of a different review today. Um, so first of all I'll just introduce where we're filming the food from. So it's DiMaggio's on Royal Exchange Square in Glasgow. So usually we would be out and about uh, outside the takeaway, doing, getting the food and then doing the review outside. But we've had the food delivered to an office block where we are today. Um, just to make it a bit easier. Also the weather outside is absolutely horrific. Um, so yeah let's just get stuck into this. So we've got a few different things to try. As usual, taste the food, talk about the food, score the food, then the camera goes off and we totally scoff the food. Uh, so yeah, let's just go for it. So as I said, today we've got the food from DiMaggio's on Royal Exchange Square. So we've got, first of all, a spicy chicken pizza, or it might even be a chicken pizza, not spicy. Uh, chips in a bag and garlic bread. Um, so we'll start, do you know let's go with the sides first and then we'll move on to the main course of pizza. So obviously Dimaggio's being an Italian orientated place, I'm expecting the pizza to be on absolute on point. I've never had pizza from this specific uh, branch of Dimaggio's before, but I live a lot closer to the one in Shawlin, so I've tried there, always good. So let's just hope it lives up to that rep from that shop that I've got. <coughs> so the first thing we've got is chips in a bag. I was totally expecting them to be in a box, but there is a fair few in there like I think the chips came in at 350, so it's fair dues um, again, but only as good if they're nice. So just standard chip. First thing I'll say is they've been cooked very, really, very really well. Um, I can't actually. I, the, the artists of frozen chips. Um, they're the skin feels a bit different to other ones, but again, they don't feel like skin on fries like some places do those. Um, just want to start with doing the squish test. I can tell you straight away they are perfectly cooked from the one I'm used to eating. So, <clears throat> got a new can man today, so let's just hope he gets the squish of the potato perfect and on point. Um, so after three again we'll squish it. If the potato comes flying out, that means that they're well cooked and the potato is not disintegrated. If nothing comes out of it, it means they've been overcooked or undercooked and the potato is still either frozen or disintegrated. So, on the count of three, Three, two, one, squish. Just hold that closer to the camera. Plenty of potatoes came out of that. <coughs> Another thing I'll say is like no excess oil on my fingers, which massive plus again. So just move the chips to the side and move on to what should be garlic bread. A uh, garlic bread was when you order it and just eat it's three forty five, so I'd imagine if you or get it in the shop, it'll probably be about three pound. That was the same for the chips; they were three forty five and just eat. But always putting things a wee bit more expensive and just eat. So I'd say it's probably three pound in the Madrid if you got them direct. <coughs> <coughs> for some reason developed a cough as the camera goes on. This was not there before. Uh, looks like that's three portion of COVID with my food. <laughs> so. With the garlic bread, you get two slices of this, and it is humongous. Like, just look how chunky the edges on that is, it's quite thick. So I'm used to getting, like, garlic bread from a normal takeaway, it's quite, like, small slices like that. But this is just chunky fat. It's, this bit looks quite soft and quite, a uh, slightly wet, which I suppose is ideal, because that's where your garlic's going to be. Um, even just squishing that, there's a bit of a crunchy noise, so I'm just going to try the... <clears throat> just while I'm doing it, just look how squidgy and spongy that is, like, per absolutely perfect, the bread didn't cook perfectly. Um, <clears throat> Whilst I'm not 100% certain if they actually make the bread and store themselves, it feels like they do because when bread is freshly cooked and then just left there for say 15 20 minutes to kind of cool down, it does give you that super crispy edge, uh, which this has definitely got. So I would guess that they maybe made that bread themselves or had it made in by a specialist baker and bought in rather than just getting a big order from somewhere like Hovis or something like that or just a standard bread factory. Um, the garlic is not overly runny, 
really good strong scent off it in the bread. Um, nice texture, it's not overly gooey, it's not overly hard in terms of some places you can get the garlic that it seems to have hardened because it's just been lying there but no, that's all absolutely on point so I can't fault that and look forward to definitely devouring that and another piece in there after the camera goes off. Before we try the, the piece to resist on, so I'm just going to clear my throat again with some water just so I can taste purely that and I'm not getting the garlic taste on the pizza. <coughs> just feel I'm doing that new cameraman, would you like to say hi to people? He is waving, he's going, he would not like to say hi to people. <laughs> so on behalf of the new cameraman, hi to the people. Uh, so that is your pizza. So. Looks like a decent 12 inch pizza to me. Uh, I'm gonna say it's a, <coughs> excuse me, a gas oven purely because the marking you can see there. Uh, definitely not an electric oven because electric ovens, whilst they do create a bit of colouring on the pizza, they definitely don't have that extent. Uh, so, just have a quick look at the underside. Oh, let's choose a bit that's actually got chicken on it. I can't even tell if this is one piece of. So the cutting of the pizza has not been exceptional. Okay, let's start at the bottom end of that. So it's definitely a gas um, pizza oven. If that had been like a wood fired one, there would have been more leoparding, which is the technical name for the colouring on the underside of it and more cooking. Um, crust feels super toasty, super crispy, so I'm pretty sure when I bite that in a couple of minutes, you will hear a crunch, crunch, crunch. <coughs> Apologies for the cough. Um, so, yeah, let's just go for this. I'm even gonna, like, do you know what, let's just take another bite of this where the chicken is. Just before I talk about that, I don't know if the camera is picking up the green bits on the actual bit of chicken there. So they've actually marinated the chicken really well as well with herbs and spices. Hey, cameraman, did you get that? Yep, awesome. So let's talk about the pizza then before I try that crust. The base, nice and thin, but it's not got a bit. So we have been to places like Pisano where the base just got absolutely soaked by the sauce and the cheese melting. So top marks for the, the base, it's not the way, it's got a nice, it's, gentle sponginess to it and go through it very easily it's not leaving a bad aftertaste the sauce is not overly pungent it's got a rich tomato taste to it i'm gonna guess that they made that in store themselves because it's got a unique kick to it um again doesn't leave a dodgy aftertaste the chicken what well, um, one thing i will say i know a lot of people who watch channel you do only halal food or that's their preference. The all the chicken in Dimaggio's is halal, and that's the only reason I got the the chicken one. Um, so the chicken really, really well cooked, super soft, they fit straight through it. They put their own blend of spices and herbs on it, and as you can see from the green dots, I hope the camera did pick that up. Uh, really nice. It stuck on like quite often. Toppings just fall off, especially that had a big lump of chicken they put on. A lot of places put tiny wee bits on. So fair do is well done, Dimaggio's. Uh, the bit I, I always love of doing these reviews is the crust purely because I love that toasty taste. So let's just go for the crust. <coughs> yeah, so just as expected, it was crunchy, crispy, toasty. Love it. And uh, whilst this was delivered to ourselves just literally a couple of minutes before we started recording, I would imagine the pizza was made about 20 minutes ago, but it's still actually quite hot. So I'm still loving that side of it as well. The pizza comes, if you order it and just eat, the pizza and a can of drink for five ninety five. If you go to the store, I believe that is £5, purely because that's what's always been in Dimaggio's in Shotlands, even though that's not the branch we got this from. Um, so amazing value for money. If you're not a pizza person and you prefer your pasta, you can also get... The pasta lunchtime deal between half eleven and three, which again five ninety five and just eat. Or if you went in, I'd imagine that will still be five pound, just like the walking offers elsewhere. <coughs> in terms of scoring this overall, then food quality, the pizza solid nine. Like there's no bad aspects of that. I just feel it didn't have 
we think that I need to eat beaten this every day or every single week, so that's the reason it's not a 10. Chicken on point, base on point, crust on point. Um, can't really complain about any aspect of that, amazing. Garlic bread, whilst the, it's super chunky, I actually enjoy it for some reason. Um, I hate it when you've got a small bit and as soon as you get into your groove, enjoying that food and it's gone. So that worked for me, uh, two pieces for 3 45 I can live with that because it was nice. Chips, again, cooked perfectly on point. A uh, decent quantity of potato inside them, not overcooked, not undercooked, not oily. Spot on, well done. Uh, overall, I've all scored the Maggio's at Royal Exchange Square in Glasgow City Centre a 9 out of 10. For the quality of food, for value, I've got to say a 10 out of 10 because to be getting in Glasgow City Centre a pizza and a drink for £6 if it's ordering online or Fiverr if you're going in, like you can't beat that, especially this sort of quality, so 10 out of 10 for value for money. In terms of parking, because you're buying in the city centre, there is a few car parks around the place, but I'd say you're probably better if you're just out and about doing your shopping to maybe just jump in then, purely because it'll be easier, you don't need to worry about parking. Uh, so, just finish it off, overall, 9 out of 10.